I don't I I don't even I don't even know how to start this video. I don't know what to say. iOS 14. I'm in love with you. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before, or if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So the first beta release of iOS 14 is here. And oh my gosh. I have had a few days to play around with iOS 14 and so many things to talk about. These are my top 10 iOS 14 features that I've discovered thus far. Let's get right into it. And starting things out in the 10th spot has to be picture in picture. With picture in picture now in iOS 14, we do have a way of multitasking when it comes to watching your video stream and getting other things done on your device. If you're watching something like Netflix, for example, you could actually exit Netflix and the video stream from your Netflix show or your movie is still gonna be on your display in picture in picture format. Regardless of what you plan on doing, it is awesome to now have picture in picture in iOS 14, something myself and other creators have been asking for for years. Shout out Viper. I know Viper, another creator here on YouTube has been asking for this for, I think forever, to be honest. So congrats Viper, they finally listened to you. Picture in picture in iOS 14 in the 10th spot in my top 10 list. The next update that I love are the updates and changes we got in messages. Yes, just when you think messages can't get any better, they do in iOS 14. There's a couple different things going on for the messages app in iOS 14, but for me personally, the three things that stick out the most have to be the ability to pin conversations, specifically mention an individual within a group conversation, and have inline replies so you can specifically reply to a specific message within the group conversation itself. The reverse side of this is that you could actually set it up so you only receive notifications for a group conversation when you're mentioned. So you could specifically call someone out and at the same time, only get an alert when you're called out. Group conversations, we love them, sometimes we hate them, but luckily with the changes coming in iOS 14, I do think group conversations are gonna get just a little bit better. Or a lot of bit better. Depends on how your group conversation actually is. Next up, let's quickly cover... Oh, I just knocked myself in the chin. Spatial audio for the AirPods Pro. This is gonna be awesome. Listen up. Pun intended. In iOS 14, the AirPods Pro are indeed now going to get spatial audio, which, without getting too technical, basically means your experience using the AirPods in your ears when you're watching a movie or a TV show is gonna become that much more like your experience as if you were in a movie theater. I really like this feature because personally, I use the AirPods Pro most for when I'm actually watching content on my Apple TV. They're not technically my choice for when just casually listening to music around the apartment or out and about. So now that we're getting spatial audio with the AirPods Pro, totally changing the way we're gonna be experiencing sound with the content we're consuming while wearing these things, <laughs> I mean, there's only, I, it's, it's, it's incredible, I love that. But coming in at number six is a feature that wasn't really announced at WWDC 20 and is still probably widely unknown, but a feature I absolutely am head over heels in love with, back taps. Now I know what you're thinking, BMAC, uh, back taps? What are you talking about? What are, what are back taps? Back taps, bear with me for a second here. This one is awesome. There's a new feature in iOS 14 that allows the device to actually recognize when you double tap, or triple tap on the back of the phone itself. For me personally, I have the setup on the iPhone 11 Pro Max so that when I double tap, it enables reachability mode. I was literally just saying like two weeks ago how I miss reachability mode on the new iPhones because we no longer have a home button. And then just like that, with an update in iOS 14, we now basically have that feature back, but instead of double tapping on a home button, you're double tapping with one finger on the back of the phone. You also do have a triple tap option. I'm still trying to figure out what to use that for. Currently, I have that set up so when I triple tap on the back of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, that brings up the app switcher. But realistically, the coolest thing here is that the possibilities are endless. You could even use them to invoke Siri shortcuts. So if you wanted to, you literally could turn on a light in your house just by double tapping on the back of your phone. That's wild. Definitely a feature I was super surprised and super happy to learn about in iOS 14 and definitely makes my top 10 list. Next up, sliding in at the number five spot has to be the new Siri 
in iOS 14. Actually, I don't think it's the five spot. It might be the six spot or the four spot. I don't know. I'm losing track. Regardless, next up. As much as I love and use Siri on a daily basis, I do have to admit in iOS 13, having Siri pretty much commandeer your entire phone when you're using her, it got to be kind of annoying. Especially if you want to be able to use Siri while still looking at information or something that's already on your display. What's awesome is that we have a new UI system in iOS 14 that has a very compact, non-intrusive Siri graphic animation that pops up when you're interacting with her. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically Siri, but with some further enhancements, she no longer takes up the entire screen. You don't have to see the words that she's recognizing. And if you're asking her to do something, there's different kind of graphics or pop-up animations that go along with that. But now it just feels different. It feels better. Now it feels like Siri is an integral part of your phone and actual artificial intelligence instead of some kind of like side app that just opens up when you interact with her. So it just, it just feels like it's more, feels like it's smarter. Why did my voice just crack? <clears throat> smarter. And next up, something very similar to that, but something so different that it deserves its own category, a new compact UI for incoming FaceTime and phone calls. Now in iOS 14, just like when you're using Siri, when you receive a FaceTime call or a phone call, it will not be intrusive. It will not take up the entire screen. It's actually only gonna take up a sliver of the entire display with a little bar that comes up on the top part of your screen. I've only personally been using this feature for a few days and already it's made a tremendous difference in my actual experience while using the iPhone. And to be honest, I don't mind receiving FaceTime and phone calls now. Before, when I was in the middle of something, I would just scramble to click that decline button as fast as I can. Now it's just like, okay, it's a little bar on the top of the screen, not a big deal. I'll probably answer it now. Just saying. And moving things right along, next up, I do wanna spend a few minutes talking about the new music app. The new music app in iOS 14 got even better. Even though there wasn't a whole lot for me to complain about regarding the music app in iOS 13, I guess you could just say it was slightly boring. Not a whole lot to like look forward to while using the app. You would just have a straight white or a straight black background in the music app when you're playing music. And there wasn't a whole lot to like look at. It just didn't really feel like Polish. It just kind of felt like bare bones. But now, in iOS 14, we get this amazing new animated gradient on our now playing page that matches the colors of the album artwork, and it just gives you an advanced iOS feeling on the iPhone, a very Apple-like music experience that just feels professional, finished, polished, just feels good, like you enjoy looking at the screen now when you're playing an album. On top of that, albums and playlist pages are gonna be organized a little bit differently with more emphasis on the album artwork itself, along with some new icons and some general organization changes throughout the app itself too that are just gonna, I think, make the whole experience that much more easy and that much more fluid for you when you're actually using the app. Sliding in at number three is a new dedicated sleep mode. So yes, your dreams have been answered. Because you know, sleeping, dreams, it's connected, it's, Okay, yes, sleep mode in iOS 14. So now in iOS 14, we do get a dedicated sleep mode that works awesomely with Watch OS 7, which we will be talking about in an upcoming video. Stay tuned for that, subscribe so you don't miss it. And the new sleep mode in iOS 14 makes winding down for the night, literally winding down, pretty much seamless. There's an actual wind down setting that will wind down the notifications and your actual usability of the phone as you approach your bedtime, which is fully customizable by the way. And then you'll have a do not disturb window, which is from your scheduled bedtime up to the point in the morning where you wanna wake up. It's an awesome way to prepare your body for sleep, keep your body asleep, and then have you ready to go with the notifications you need in the morning when your day's getting started. I'm a huge fan of the sleep mode. Sometimes I need a little extra motivation to close out the distractions at night and actually get ready for bed. So I'll be using and testing out sleep mode more and more in the coming days and weeks. And again, seeing how that works with Watch OS 7, so more on that to come. But so far, I think it's making a difference. I think I've been sleeping a little bit better. So it's doing its job. Next up in the number two spot, ooh, we're getting into the top two here. And this is a big one, App library app library is a game changer if you're a minimalist if you like a minimalistic setup on your iphone or if you like to remove clutter you're gonna love app library it basically gives you clean quick to access and easy to navigate preset folder organization for the existing apps already on your iphone basically you just swipe on over on your home screen you will eventually arrive at the app library window and here you'll see all your apps pre-organized intelligently into different categories so it's nice to have app library where most of your apps that you probably aren't going to be using 
all that often, but the system knows you do use, organized right there for you in that app library window. The other cool thing about app library is that along with the window, you do have the option of actually now hiding apps. You do not any longer have to actually delete an app to remove it from your home screen. I love this. This is ridiculously awesome. This helps me keep my iPhone minimalistic, organized, working for me so I could be the most productive iPhone user that I can be. App library, so far, incredible. But we do have to leave a few minutes to talk about probably the most obvious number one feature, my personal favorite feature of iOS 14, widgets. Wiggity 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 widgets. I tried to do something special there, but it didn't, that didn't come out that great. With this one additional feature of widgets on the home screen, just like that, you get additional customization to really make your iPhone your own. You get additional productivity potential. And overall, you just get a better glance at the information you need readily available for you just by looking at your home screen. Now you can see, I only have the Apple stock widgets available right now. I'm sure in the coming weeks, we will have additional third-party developer widgets that'll be compatible here. But you can see, just by glancing at my phone, I can see the weather outlook, and then you could also see your activity. There's different widgets you could use here. You really could just set them up for what you want. And then on top of this, you have a feature within widgets called widget stacking. So you can see on these widgets, these are kind of like widget folders. Just by swiping on the widget itself, you could bring up additional widgets. Therefore, getting all the information you need right at your fingertips, right on the home screen, just with a simple tap or a simple little flick. This is fascinating to me. This, in my eyes, makes better use of the additional screen real estate we have on these larger display iPhones now. It's not like the entire screen on your home screen is just being consumed by apps now. Now we actually have useful information and customization that again makes this phone your own. Hopefully we'll have additional sizes and shapes for widgets in the future, but for right now, I love the direction that Apple is heading in with these widgets in iOS 14, and I personally can't wait to see where these lead in the future. But those are my top 10 features of iOS 14. I'm sure I'll find more in the coming weeks, coming days. If you guys have one that I miss, or if you have one that people don't really know about, Comment those down below as well. I'm gonna go check out iOS 14 in a little bit more detail, go deep diving into settings and such, so don't expect me to be available for about the next 104 hours, because that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'll see you guys in my next video. Oh, look at the widgets, Gucci Gucci Goo, so cute, so cute, look at the little widgets, oh. I know that's a really weird way to react to widgets, but can, can, you, can you blame me? I mean, they're widgets. So cute.